Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today, I want to talk about a track that I started uh, yesterday and finished it today. Kind of finished. It's not finished yet, but there's already some interesting stuff that I want to tell you. So, usually before, I was only making tracks from scratch. Mm, not really talking about things I already done. And today, I think I'm going to tell you about a track that I have done. I'm going to let you hear it, and then I'm going to just talk about every single element pointing your attention to some parts that may be interesting, some ideas that might inspire you in your sound design and music production journey. Yeah, so enjoy. Uh, you can download the session. It's Ardor 5.12 and it's using Zenfusion. You can use a demo version if you don't want to buy the full one. Or you can try using the regular 2.x interface for Zenet SubFX. It should work apart from some automation stuff. Let's give it a listen. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through what I've done in this track. So the first thing, um, I've been making some um, spaceship engine sounds for some game developers. And this is Zenat SubFX doing a modulation, multi-operator modulation. And then it's fed through a notch filter, lots of reverb. and a chorus that is giving it that distinct phasing effect that is very, very much used in Star Wars. Any sound of an engine of, <laughs> of, an, of a starship flying by, it, it's heavily using chorus or flanger with, module, with, with manually automated uh, modulation depth. So this is it. It's modu modulated. You can see. this lead and that lead uh, is fed through a bandpass filter which is let me show you it's a glam bandpass analog filter and that is has a very fun thing because it has the center frequency and the bandwidth in Hertz so I'm effectively doing you know very wide sorry very narrow bandpass and then I'm making it wider until it's actually passing through all the frequencies so it's non-effective. So this is the curve, the automation curve. It starts from 20 hertz of width. It's getting wider and wider. So it's a nice way to reveal the sound. It unwraps. So it's it's something a bit more, you know, interesting than just a simple high pass filter that is, you know, giving through more mids and lows, because that sounds very sharp, very, very, you know, it hurts the ears when you play it, because you can hear only the high frequencies, especially if you use a compressor after the filter, because it's going to make it louder. But there is, the, no, this is the, the last thing. We have also a kick that is using the same effect, and it sounds like a metronome a bit. And then, the band pass widens until it's a proper kick. And we have a snare that is used afterwards. I have some problem with the hi hat because I wanted the you know the the envelope stretch function to make the high pitched notes be shorter and the low pitched notes be longer. So I would have like 
I couldn't achieve this. For some reason, it didn't work, so... Oh. Then I made this um, PWM bass, which is using pulse width modulation. It is mapped... Um, I'm going to show you. It is mapped with the macro learn to MIDI CC1, which is basically the mod wheel. And that is fed to frequency, actually it's not frequency modulation, it is pulse width modulation. Here we have add synth, voice one is modulating, voice two is the carrier, and it's using pulse modulation, using the, mo <laughs> the voice one as the modulator, and um, this control is basically automated with the modulation wheel. Why am I using modulation wheel not the usual Zens effects slot one, two, and three? Because the modulation wheel data is copied with the media region, so I can duplicate the region and this automation is copied with it, which is a bit easier to maintain. I know the resolution of this control is far lower, but it doesn't really break anything in this case. So it's just easier. Otherwise, to copy this, I would have to use the range select mode Select first the MIDI track, then the automation lane, control C, put my um, mouse or playhead where I want to paste it, and then go control V to have it placed with modulation. Right now it breaks because, you know, it's not for that. You can just copy and paste just the MIDI region, and the data is, the automation data is embedded into this because it is MIDI CC automation. <laughs> and that's very useful. What is also easier is moving the data around because when you have um, when you're using the CC the MIDI CC for automation you just can move the MIDI region and the automation moves with it if you're using external automation you have to actually select with the range tool select your automation lanes and then cut your selection and paste it where you want it so it is a bit tricky I hope New Order devs are going to make this easier for the EDM folks because um, yeah And this, this modulation uh, wheel gives us lots of expression. So then I took some parts and shifted them to a different instrument, this super, super saw, to create kind of a hocket. And the super saw, I'm gonna show you. The super saw is nothing super fancy. Actually, it's not a super saw, I think. Yeah, it's a power wave. <laughs> Using uh, unison with quite a lot of detune. And then uh, it is being distorted once, distorted twice, and then high passed. However, there is something interesting about it. I am using the um, frequency envelope. Actually, it's the voice frequency envelope, yeah. And it's starting with the frequency way down low. Without that, it's regular. With it, you know, it's starting low and then going up. It is also going down after the release. You see, without this envelope, well, this pitch envelope, it sounds way more dull and uninteresting. With this pitch envelope, we give it some interesting character, so it is not as boring, which is... This is a very interesting trick that you can apply to many sounds. Sometimes it's better to use portamento for this. So you go to part settings, you enable portamento, and then you make this monophonic or legato. Do not have them both notes play when you use portamento, but just one pitch, and then you have gliding pitch, which is very useful. Then you control the portamento settings here, the time, make it longer, shorter. Uh, I use that for the bass. I'm going to show you in a minute. Also, we have this fill lead. It is fed to a sidechain bus instead of the master. The sidechain bus is here, and it basically has a calf multiband compressor, sorry, a calf sidechain compressor, which is crushing it very hard using the kick, basically. So when I play anything, you see the kick thumping and it's giving quite a lot of um, gain reduction, which makes it pump.
I also made a crash symbol. You see this one, but it is actually capable of playing a melody. So when I'm using the lower notes, it is sounding like a crash symbol, more or less. But if I'm using higher notes, it actually plays a melody. The crash symbol, um, I'm, you know, using an EQ to high pass it and accentuate some frequencies to give it a more natural character. It's just, you know, done by ear, nothing, nothing super, you know, special, no math. And then I'm heavily compressing it to make it, to make the reverb tail louder and make it blend with the original sound. So it, it re you know, it decays very, l very long. And it's interesting because on the higher notes, it has a fundamental that gives you the hint of the note played. It has also some inharmonic overtones, which give it this metallic bell-like mm, character. And it plays very nice as a melodic instrument. I also wanted to show you this bass too. I told you, I told you about using portamento and this instrument is using portamento. To give it some um, expression. So basically this part looked like this. You see, now there are some notes we can't see, all right. However, I added some notes that overlap just to add a pitch ramp. So I have an upwards pitch ramp here. And I have a downwards pitch ramp here, which is more expressive. It's more musical that way. It is kind of hard to do this. You can do this with pitch band automation. Just go to M automation bender and channel one, if you're using channel one. And you can use this, but it's way harder to do that. And you have way more control. And if you need to change the portamento time, so how fast the pitch ramp is happening, you can always, you know, assign it to Zenfusion's sum slot or even, you know, the MIDI CC like the modulation wheel and automate the portamento speed or time. Oh, something. Now I made this arpeggio here on the saw super saw instrument. And how I made this is I basically, I'm gonna just redo it for you. I'm gonna go D to draw. Oh, I guess I need to change to miles. Yep. So I made a note. So this is a chromatic passage, but I made it shorter. With Alt, I am unlocking myself from the grid so I can make it shorter. And then what I did, copied all of that, pointed my mouse here, pasted it, and now shift, alt, up arrow, shift it by one octave. Then I pasted it another time, shifting my mouse another beat to the right, control V, shift, alt, and two times up arrow. And another time, control V, shift, up, three times. And I have an arpeggio. And this, this serves here to kind of lead you to a key change because uh, that two-step bass here, I kind of made it and it kind of sounds in a different key. So I thought about shifting it two semitones down, but it didn't really sound well. So I just tried to glue the two parts together with this arpeggiated chromatic passage to, you know, kind of leads you to a different key. So this transition isn't so abrupt. Let's maybe listen and see if it works. <laughs> I really like this bass. I. I wanted to make a, I started with a with drum beat. So I just started with this guy. 
And it, I f- was like, dude, that is two-step. This is UK Garage all the way. I never, ever made a UK Garage track. And I, and I was like, whoa, awesome. Now I can try these awesome two-step basses. So I tried it. Uh, however, I didn't really know how to begin. So I searched YouTube for some tutorials and I found some French guy talking about doing this in Serum. And I f- looked at two minutes of that and he's just, you know, having one sine wave, then another sine wave oscillator, pitch shifting the second sine wave oscillator two octaves up and using that as a frequency modulator for the first one. And then using an LFO that just makes it modulating deeper and lower. What I did so in Zenat Sub FX. Ah, sweet. I love that. It's so bouncy. Just makes me want to dance. So let's disable all the effects. And also I will reassign it to master output so we don't have this side chaining. I'm going to just open up this instrument to show you. So basically we have Pitch shifted these two octaves down for the begin for the beginning. Oh, I have learn enabled. I should not touch anything because I'm gonna mess up my. Uh, yeah, disable learn. Uh, it's something I always forgot about. I enable learn. I learn something in the macro learn, and then I leave the learn on, and I click something else, and I break everything. So be cautious when you use that. So I have the voice, first voice. You see, it's pitch shifted three octaves up. It's oscillating, it's just a sine wave. However, I'm also enabling os- mm, <laughs> FM modulation for this mm, modulating voice. So we have voice two, which is a sine wave, a low pitch sine wave. Uh, and then it's modulating, it's being modulated with the voice one, which is a high pitched sine wave. And I'm automating this no, sorry, I'm not automating. Nope. I'm not touching the um, modulation depth on this voice. However, on the first voice, I am using Amplitude LFO. I don't know why it's not doing the effect it should. Did I break something? Yeah, you disable the modulation on voice two. Oh man. Okay, I broke it. <laughs> All right, never mind. Let's reload the session. So I'm going to show you how this bass works. Here we have the two-step bass. It's only two voices. The voice two is what we hear. So as you can see in the amplitude section of the voice, the velocity, the volume is on. If I play on my keyboard, this is what we hear. You can go to the voice list. You see, we have two of them. This third voice is just an additional sine wave of oscillator just to fill in the, the low uh, part of the spectrum. Uh, this is what we hear, and this is the modulator. Uh, it, is, it has the volume of zero, so if I ha- give it volume, this is the sound that is modulating voice two. And I'm going to show you. Voice 1 has an amplitude LFO. Which is bound to... Mod wheel. I can play with this. It also uses frequency modulation and has uh, its own modulation enabled. So it's not just a sine wave. It also has modulation to give it more character, more high frequency content to make it more sharp. And it has more bite. So when I give this volume of zero, and enable the second voice. Let's go to voice two. And voice two is also a sine wave, 
and in the modulation tab, we can see that it uses phase modulation and it's referencing voice one as its modulator. <laughs> We have a fixed amount of, of uh, modulation depth. We are using a lot of volume sensing, velocity sensing. So if I play softly, there is very little modulation. If I play hard, there's so much modulation that it turns into white noise. So, by combining note velocity and the mod wheel, we can get have quite a lot of control over the sound. There is also Portamento in place. If we go to the part settings, you can see we have Portamento enabled with the Legato mode. So that is that. We have a uh, global filter is, I think it is being bypassed on the voice too. No. is used. And as you can hear, it gets rid of some of, some of the high-frequency noisy rubbish that we produce with the phase modulation. Then it goes into the effects. I'm gonna disable the distortion. Let's, whoa, let's bypass all of that. Listen to the raw sound. So this is a very classic <laughs> FM sound, actually. You know, it, you know here it's very FM-ish. We can't hide the character of the sound and where it comes from, but if we use distortion... We can hide this character, add something new, and make it less obvious how the sound is made. Now some reverb. The reverb using, is using high pass filter, so only the high frequencies are being reverbated. If I make it all wet, here there is no bass in the reverb. Which is what we want because the reverb would mess up the, the low frequency content pretty badly. So yeah, then this goes out and is being processed with these effects. I disable it. So we have just the frequency modulation, the distortion, and the reverb. Now we have an exciter in place. We can listen to just the harmonics that it's producing. This is basically a distortion unit with high pass filter that is being blended in to add high frequency content. You might remember we removed some with the low pass filter and now we're restoring that. We're bringing in more high, pre high frequency content because we are, we're lacking some. You can hear without it, it sounds kind of dull. And now we're giving it more edge. Then heavy compression. The compression is mainly to bring out the reverb after the main sound is, is decaying. So you can see if I play a note, we have high gain reduction. Then the gain reduction slowly falls down revealing our reverb tail. You can especially hear this when uh, the reverb tail is being cut short when we play another note. Then it's a uh, there's a de-esser because 
sometimes you can get very nasty high frequency content when uh, I hit the note too hard. Uh, there's a lot of modulation going on and we get lots of high frequency content, which is kind of harsh on the ears. So I'm using a de to just cut it down. It is basically listening to a high pass signal. As you can hear, it's really accentuating these irritating frequencies and then it's applying a compression to that. It also has a peak, fil peak filter here to accentuate about 4.5 kilohertz to make it even more um, to these frequencies. And finally, an EQ. DQ, it's high passing unneeded low end frequencies. As you can see, our main bass tone is somewhere around 50, 80 hertz. It's very low. I am boosting around 200 hertz. It's basically the second harmonic. Often, it's somewhere around right here. I'm cutting somewhere around 500 a bit and then boosting something. There were just random ringing noises that I just didn't like. And then I bring out uh, lots more high f shelves, high frequencies with the high shelves. However, these are just on the edge of human hearing range. Uh, you can see that there's not much source material here. So this enormous high shelf boost isn't really doing that much because there isn't much there to be boosted. But still, that's the bass. Let's get back to the original video because this was recorded in post because I had bad audio recorded. <laughs> and that makes some variation. Without even about this automation, it sounds pretty smart. Because the LFO is restarted every time you play a note, you can kind of, you know, with notes to to give it some interest make it less boring for the beginning I just had this note so it was just like that I also modified the velocities of the notes so you can see this is 53 64 68 60 58 64 70 and I have mapped the velocity of the note to mm, Da, 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 to modulation depth of the first voice. So the first high pitch sine wave is also modulated with another sine wave. And I have all the way the sensitivity for that. So this has lots of, of influence. So it adds more high pitch content. It gives some more expression to the sound. <laughs> And finally, I have recorded some vocals. Let's uh, A B plugins. I chopped them up and you know revert some parts. Then I high passed the thing because because I had lots of low frequency content that I didn't want. I used auto tune. I thought about maybe pitching this to a musical pitch, but it didn't really work. So I, it's it just not, not doing anything. Actually, I can remove that. Then I used MA Pitch Shift to pitch shift it. Uh, and it's not automated. It's just a static thing. I just played around to do a pitch shift with enough window blur and crossfade to make it in sound interesting and less default and normal. And then I added a delay which is using eight subdivisions and six time. It's, it's stereo. <laughs> then I compress the hell out of it to, to make the, the, the volume more consistent and also to ramp up the delay after the, the initial sound stops. And then I added a guitaric stereo chorus effect, which I really like. It, it's, I don't know why, but this chorus, I so much like the sound of this chorus effect. GX chorus stereo. Awesome. To add some width to the signal because it was mono. <laughs> and 
And then I feed it to the sidechain bus to make it, you know, quiet when the kick hits, so it doesn't uh, interrupt with the beat with the pumping groove. And another one, I added Argot Lunar, which is a, an amazing, like, along with MA Pitch Shift, it's my favorite mess it up style of effect. It It's a granular processor, so it splits the signal into sh short time chunks and processes them independently. And I'm transposing each one, so it's actually doing a job of a um, pitch shifter right now. And I'm automating the amount. So 0 0.5 here is the neutral pitch shifting, so it's no change. Above 0 0.5 is pitch shifting it up, and below 0 0.5 is pitch shifting it down. So I'm just automating this, having fun. Without the effects, the raw sound. Yeah, we have the uh, side chaining also <laughs> audible. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little bit sick. Um. <laughs> So when Argot Lunar is enabled, I also use call compressor to rise up whatever is hidden, you know, to just give more detail, bring it up to be visible. And then because I had some high pitched sounds that, that were hard hurting, like here, I just enabled a I just added a deesser, so it would attenuate parts of the mm, of the recording where there are high pitched sounds. You see it. And that is just a lazy way to make the sound not be painful in the high frequency range when you just don't want to manually automate it or EQ everything because. I want to maintain the high frequency content in all the other parts. And that's pretty much it. I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. You can download the session for this track. It's for Ardor 5.12, so the stable version. No more Ardor 6 until it's stable. And it's probably not going to be stable in a couple of uh, months or maybe a year, I don't know. Wait a minute. I also want to thank everyone who is supporting me on Patreon and everyone who is buying my music on Bandcamp. You are giving me the hope that I will be able to do this as a half-time or maybe even a full-time job. And that's fantastic because I have so many things to teach you. And honestly, making videos is very time-consuming. I wish I could do more of this and do it better, but I just it's hard to, you know, uh, find the time between my full-time job and other activities to, to do it. So the growing support on Patreon is giving me the hope that I will be able to take out one, two or three days every week or even every month, like, I don't know, three days every month just for making videos. That will already be a big upgrade. So we are slowly heading that direction. And if you feel that videos like this are needed, and if you want to help me help the open source musician community grow, consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. Thanks for watching. And I see you in the next video. Bye.